G'day YouTube, Max Wright here, and with the Bitcoin price being a little bit boring today and moving sideways, I decided to do something, just, it's always good to remind yourself of something big picture. And I'm just, um, we see this graph all the time, okay? And it's kind of like, it's this, this well, I'm going the wrong way, I guess. But this, this, this what's it called? Um, it's a logarithmic regression, it's called. But it just, it makes you think like, the more you stare at this chart, the more you, you think that the price of Bitcoin is gonna get more and more boring. And it's like, oh man, I wish I could in the early days. It's just, you know, but we all know it intellectually, but this is a logarithmic chart. As we move up, every one of these lines is an order of magnitude higher, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. And it's anything other, the further along you get, the more, uh, actually the much bigger the gains are. It's just super, super exciting. But as we, we look at the, the chart as a log so often, we just, it kind of makes you feel like, ah, we're petering out a little bit, not much is happening. And just, man, nothing could be further from the truth. And I think it's worth slowing down and let's take a look at it linearly for a second and just remind ourselves where we are in the cycle. So I was, um, this kind of got triggered by this, uh, this chart. And it says, uh, Bitcoin now has roughly the same amount of users as the internet had in 1997, and it's growing at a faster pace. So you can see we have um, the white line here is, uh, is where? That's the internet growth. And I guess the years for that are at the top. So we're looking at about 1997 right here. Uh, but for 2021, we're looking here for Bitcoin users we here. So when we, we start them off here, we see that Bitcoin's actually growing faster than the internet. Very, than the internet was in 1997. Like that is just crazy. So what's happening here? Let's take a look at it. And it's super important to understand this. This is the S curve. And you'll notice we're now on a linear chart. And when a new technology comes along, it goes through these five kind of phases. There are the innovators who come along at the very early stage the product is extremely clumsy, it is difficult to use, um, and just a challenge all around. But they come along and the innovators come along and make it a little bit better. And then you get the early adopters come along. These people who are tech adventurous, they like to kind of be interested in new things and it's now easy enough for them to deal with and a, a lot of the headaches have already been solved by the innovators and it makes it a little bit easier. And then you have the early majority and the latter majority. And this is where we hit the Bitcoin tipping point. It's where things absolutely go parabolic and start climbing extremely quickly, right? And the early majority and late majority come on in a very, very short amount of time, right? You can see it takes us 10 years to get to here. Now this is two and a half percent of the population. And I think that's 13 and a half percent of the population. So we are talking 16% of the population have Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, have any technology, for example, whatever amount of years that takes, it takes about the same amount of years for another 70% of the population to get on board with that technology. So, right, we're going to come back to this in a little bit and just understand that that's how this growth curve takes place. Now, first of all, is the growth curve, uh, the S curve um, valid? So there's a fun little website here. You can come in here and you can click on different things and add them, take them out and whatever else. And we've got, you know, from 1916 to 2019, 100 years of data here. And we've got it for the tablet, for the dryer, for the internet, for computers, for television, for the flush toilet. This is just the line, the growth, um, the growth line, the share of US households using specific technologies, right? And, and we just come in here and, and this is the S curve. No matter how it, obviously, this is the nice, clean, academic way of looking at it. In reality, it can look something like this, where this, uh, what is this one at the bottom? I think it's a dishwasher. Yeah, dishwasher, pink. The dishwasher, apparently there's a dishwasher in uh, you know, 1920 or something. Doesn't really take on, doesn't really catch. People aren't using it. Maybe it's using commercial kitchens. Some innovator figures something out and all of a sudden it gets a little bit cheaper. It gets a little bit better. The quality of the technology improves. The problems are solved and it starts going up into this S curve and we just climbs higher and higher and higher until you eventually get higher. And I think with the dishwasher, it kind of pe peaks out here uh, at 70% so far. Eventually that'll work its way up to 100%. But you can see some things just rocket to the top like flush toilets, et cetera, and it's just 100% 
market penetration of things like that. And it just sits along the top at 100%. But everything's kind of growing off this curve. Now, what's something that jumps out at you at this curve is that up until we get to about the 20% mark, you know, some things move pretty steeply and get to it, but some things take some time. But once they hit that 20% mark, they tend to move a lot faster. Right? Some things just go absolutely vertical, head up towards that 100% mark. Some things kind of going along, but they, a lot of things are kind of steeper when the market penetration is between 20% and 80%. That is when it's at its fastest growing period, right? Compared to this area down here, where there's still people working out the kinks, improving the product, improving the technology, building better wallets, building better exchanges, building better things. With regards to Bitcoin, that's how those examples would take place. So where are we in Bitcoin's um, overall place? Well, there are so many different ways to ask that question and no one really knows, but a few bits of uh, data, for example, in this, um, here's where we are in 2018. Now, granted, it would have gone up a little bit um, the last couple of years, of course, but we can see here how many consumers own cryptocurrency. And remember, we're talking about consumers here. So we're talking about adults. We're not even talking about children. And there's a few outlier countries up here, but you know, the, in the United States, 92% of people had no cryptocurrency in 2018, right? 90. Now maybe it's, it's got more. So what, what does that translate to mean 8% of people do? So maybe now it's 10%, 12%, 15%. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, and there's just, there's no real way to know. You just got to look at different data, different pieces of information. And for sure, Somewhere, if we come back to the S curve, where um, you know the early adopt, we've got the 2.5 percent of the population are the innovators, and the 13.5 percent that takes us to 16 percent of people. I think we're pretty close to around this 13, 14, 15 percent of the worldwide population having Bitcoin. Translation: We are at the Bitcoin tipping point, and we kind of see that with countries making it um, legal tender. All of a sudden, all of the major banks are getting on board and for their private investor clients, all of a sudden they're helping them buy Bitcoin. Um, we've got ETFs popping up around the world, Bitcoin ETFs. We've got corporations holding on their treasury reserve. It absolutely feels like a tipping point where you know maybe a small percentage of corporations have it on their treasuries. A small percentage of countries, I, you know, one in 200, so what's that? Half a percent of countries have, have it, uh, are making it legal tender. Um, just, you know, probably a relatively small percent of hedge funds have it in their indexes. So all of these kind of things, we just, it feels like very much we're in here and the data supports that we're here and we are very, very closely approaching the tipping point. And the next decade is where, you know, whatever the number is, let's say, let's say we're at, let's go ahead and say we're at 20% for easy math. I don't think we're there, but let's say we're at 20% of worldwide population. So 20% of worldwide population, uh, let's, we've got 7 billion. So 1.4 billion would be 20%, right? But in the next, that's, that, that's generous. I don't think we're at 20%. Let's call it, I don't think we're at a billion. I really don't think we're at a billion, but let's call it a billion. So it's taken 10 years to get us to this billion. Well, the next decade should bring on another three or 4 billion people into Bitcoin. And you just think about what does that do to the price? Like it's just how much better is the, does the technology get when there's all these users, all these companies chasing, making the ecosystem better. Some of them will be decentralized organizations. Some of them will be centralized organizations. Just think about the innovation that will happen in that space. Like think back to that dishwasher example. For 30, 40 years, dishwashers are around, but maybe only only used by commercial kitchens that are probably very expensive, big, clunky, the technology wasn't that cool. And then as the technology got good, just the people just gravitated towards it. Well, you know, Bitcoin serves its purpose beautifully right now. I think it actually has two purposes. It has a store of value purpose and it has a payments rail purpose. The payments rail purpose is just now with Lightning Network, just starting to fulfill its promise. It's taken 10 years to get there. The store of value promise has been working exceptionally well for its entire existence. You know, for over the 10 years, it's been going up at 200% per year on average. Um, obviously, big, plenty of years where it went down, but the majority of the time averaged out. Its store of value is doing an amazing job. 
I think we're gonna see the payment rail system with Lightning Network really come online here in the next few years. And we are at the tipping point. We are so early in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin that just the profits we're gonna have is just going to absolutely skyrocket. Um, it's just a very, very exciting time. And I want everyone to really, really understand that because we spend so much time looking at, is it this one? No, is it this one? Looking at this one. And you think, oh man, it would have been great to get in here. You are down here. Like we are so early. You are at the bottom of the S curve. This one over here, you are down here. See, when you look at this graph, it feels great and amazing to be in down here. When you look at this graph, it's like, ah, oh, man, I missed it. There's not much to go. And this is a logarithmic chart and it's very deceiving. And I really, really, really want to impress upon everybody just how early you are and just how excited you should be to be involved in this movement at this time. Forget about all the social consequences, you know, the equalization of wealth the open and free markets, the access to banking situation. Forget about all the social good that'll do, the environmental problems that Bitcoin's solving. Forget about all that stuff. Just to be here is such a privilege and so exciting for your personal wealth. So guys, and, and actually it's, it's worth noting, it's worth noting, let's go back to all these technologies. Is it here? Yeah, it's okay. Maybe you invest in a dishwasher company or maybe you invest in cable TV or whatever. These things are all just trivial, trivial things compared to money, right? And to be here, maybe you pick the right dishwasher company or maybe to be involved, you have to have be in the dishwasher industry somehow or invest in a dishwasher company or something like that. This is, this is the world of money. Every single person is going to be involved and it's so simple for you to be involved. All you have to do is go buy some cryptocurrency, go buy some Bitcoin. Very, very exciting. Okay, guys, I hope that helps. Get very excited. We are here and we are we are knocking on the door of the tipping point, in my belief. Uh, within a year or two, we're going to be here and it's about to go down, to quote Kesha or Pitbull. One of the two, I guess it's Pitbull. Um, all right, guys, go ahead, smash up that like button, hit the like, uh, is hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments below. Did that feed your soul? So often we look at this and you're like, nah, yeah, it's cool. Nah, we're we're going to catch the last little part of this ride. And then when you look at this, that is like, yes, we are early. It's exciting. Let me know if it got you pumped up. Okay, guys, take care and I will see you in the next video.